panic in the streets of Tallahassee. Havoc spreads from the Capitol to every corner of the Sunshine State as the legislature continues its campaign of terror. This week was chock full of terror with an agenda packed with dark machinations against the working people of Florida. This special report is filled with horror, so get ready. This is the big one. The worst assault on workers in years continued its path of peril through the legislature. You're doing everything you can. Well, everybody is, but it's not good enough. A time will come when the beasts will inherit the earth. House Bill 1 attacks the public sector workers who do so much to make our state function. Firefighters, first responders, teachers, and state workers would be subject to draconian hurdles put in place to dampen Floridians' rights to organize. This lethal legislation makes up a gargantuan attack on workers, giving employers the final say over union membership and severely complicating the reauthorization process. And every employee that is in a bargaining unit, they get to vote just like we do, okay? Nobody is discriminated against. Everybody get to vote because the state of Florida made that happen for us, okay? They said we didn't have to be in the union to be able to get the bargaining rights, okay? So when you sit here and you tell me that I don't have the knowledge to know to sign up for a union, if I want it, I'm going to do it, okay? No one has a right to tell me what type of organization I want to be a part of. That's my right as a being a, a citizen of the United States of America, okay? So thank you. Thank you. Unions here to protect us, okay? Because at the long run with this bill, the one who's gonna suffer are the working people. Because you're giving the right to the employer to come and verify my signature when it could take six months to do it because there's not in, the, in that bill that tell them you have to do this in a certain amount of time. Okay, I don't need someone to tell me that they are out here to protect me. I appreciate the representative presenting this in a way where it looks like he's trying to protect the American worker. It clearly doesn't have anything to do with that. We know how to unsubscribe, it's 2020. Thank you. I've been a union member for about 15 years now and um, I also work with the union and I also give um, orientations to new hires and I let them know that they have that option to choose if they would like to join the union and I let them know the benefits and I let them know the decision is all theirs. Also um, whenever they decide to opt out of the union it's done that same day. They just make a phone call and it's done. There is nothing confusing or cumbersome about this process. You will make it more difficult for teachers like me to have a voice in the workplace and to speak up as professionals for our students uh, if you pass this bill. Do not add unnecessary burdensome regulations um, to my colleagues and me, particularly at a time when we are in the midst of a teacher shortage. Please don't interfere with my rights. I strongly urge you to oppose HB1. I joined TALC over 20 years ago in my new teacher orientation. In Florida, I had to choose to join my union and I was happy to do so. I was not coerced or strong-armed into membership. Over the past 20 years, my membership has rewarded me many times over. Whether it was professional development, community service, or collective advocacy, membership in my union has paid off. Uh, this is a tax. This is a tax on school districts. This is a tax on unions. There is not a single piece of tangible evidence that's been presented that some of these practices, these extreme assertions of malfeasance or nefarious activities by unions actually occurred. So just a few minutes before I walked into the committee, I got this packet of scanned and emailed letters uh, that were all completed, handwritten letters, uh, all completed last night, and with the chair's indulgence, I'd like to get it to the sergeants uh, to, to get to you, but some of these are addressed to uh, Representative Roth, Representative Grawl, uh, here's another one for Representative Roth, Representative Grant. Uh, this was a group of workers that got together last night and completed 62 multi-page handwritten letters about this issue. That's what this is about. Average working people who have done nothing wrong who feel like that, that they're under attack for other reasons. In fact, all of us up here who are state employees have benefits to the state. Those are auto-renewed. If we want to change anything, 
with our benefits that are monies being deducted from our paychecks for our health insurance, et cetera, we um, have the form to call. We can call in or we can use the form and opt out, but it is auto renewed. So I don't understand why this would be different for union members. Florida's public sector workers have the right to representation on the job. Unfortunately, the House State Affairs Committee disagrees. The bill passed 12 to 7. Across the nation and here in Florida, assaults on transportation workers have increased. The folks who keep our public transportation systems running provide a vital service to our communities and cities. They shouldn't have to fear for their safety on the job. House Bill 951 provided much needed safety standards to protect drivers and other transportation workers. While we support the bill, there is still more that needs to be done for our workers' safety, including installing protective barriers for drivers. The House bill was up on Tuesday. It's gotten to a point where it's, it's a distraction, where I'm constantly looking over my shoulder for, for anything. Anything can happen. Uh, we've, I've had a co-worker, a female operator, sitting in the seat at a light, and a guy came up behind her for no reason at all, punched her in the face. I had a gentleman one night, and, his, and here's the picture. You may not be able to see what's, what's on here. Um, there's a gentleman holding, holding a fire on. He gets off the bus, calls, calls himself a uh, terminating operator. He pulled a gun out, cocked it, and looked at the operator. Scared the hell out of him. He gets off the bus, goes across the street, catches another bus, and does the same thing. So this is this is what we're we're dealing with. So I'm asking that you all please support this bill because it may save my life or it may save one of my one of my comrades' life also, and one, even one of our passengers. So I stand in support of this bill. In just about every other mode of tr public transportation, we protect the driver. Cabs have glass shields. Train operators are in enclosed compartments and don't even think about getting near a pilot. Yet in the mode of public transportation that carries more passengers than any other, bus drivers are often left unprotected. The bill before you today is a may, not a shall bill. It says that the risk reduction plan may include barriers to protect being able to get at the driver, against getting, um, able to getting at the driver. This means that agencies can do it if they want to, but do not have to if they do not want to. The fact is, all buses should have shields. Senate Bill 1460 will now be considered in the Senate Judiciary Committee. House Bill 951 passed the Justice Appropriations Subcommittee triumphantly, 12 to nothing. This week, the push to eliminate your right to petition and amend the state constitution took another step. Senate Bill 1794 is yet another wave in the front against the citizens initiative process giving the legislature the ability to put their thumb on the scale of proposed ballot amendments, making the petition process even more arduous for grassroots organizations and adding more red tape throughout the process. Senate Bill 1794 appeared in the Senate Judiciary Committee on Tuesday. Coming, General. Ahead of the mayhem, pro-democracy activists and elected officials met to hold a memorial for this foundational right of Floridians. This year we have yet another attempt to make it even harder for citizens to amend the Constitution. Uh, you know, imposing requirements on uh, making it, uh, restricting the amount of time uh, and uh, adding more hoops for those seeking to amend the Constitution to jump through effectively making the process so complicated and expensive that only billionaires are going to have access to this process because of the kind of operation you'd have to run in order to be able to amend the, the Constitution through the citizens initiative process. So the, the legislature is trying to kill the citizens initiative process uh, and we're here to remember the good days and recognize what the citizens initiative process has brought us over the years. So, thank you. There's often not a lot of institutional knowledge uh, in these buildings anymore, and I think it's important to note that the Citizens Initiative didn't die with a single cut. It didn't die with a single blow. The legislature has been whittling away at it since 2004, 
For 16 years, we have seen over 100 pieces of legislation filed, killing the citizens' right to direct democracy with a thousand paper cuts. As you all know, the people brought us voter restoration last year. If this bill were to pass, it is uncertain whether or not we would have been able to do that. We mourn the loss of democracy. Thank you. To add insult to injury, in spite of seven good amendments and a packed room, the bill to silence voters passed with no testimony allowed. But I, I have heard of no complaints uh, of the citizens' initiative petition process. What, what, why are we once again wading into this and making it more expensive uh, for uh, citizens to amend the Constitution? Senate Bill 1794 passed the Senate Judiciary Committee 4-2 to two and will continue to the Senate Rules Committee. Florida's legislature continues to grow exponentially in size, consuming every inch of local power in the process. Senate Bill 1216 is just another example of the ravenous consumption of any say Floridians have in their government, imposing term limits on local school boards through a statewide vote, whether individual communities want them or not. What are the odds? We're going to have to be lucky, very lucky. Nonpartisan local elections do not share the same power of incumbency that we see in other types of elections. According to the School Boards Association, if we go back to the 2018 race, 62% of all school board races were judged competitive. Out of that, 33, or excuse me, 36% turned over. 36% of incumbents lost their election. 62% of incumbents were challenged. They could have a great record. Many of these school board members have guided their districts from C to B to A. They will be summarily eliminated. Term limits produce officials with less experience and less institutional memory. Short-term office holders adopt short-term solutions to long-term problems. In the face of indomitable odds by big money and their cronies in the Capitol, Floridians are standing up against the threats to working families. Thursday, AFL-CIO affiliate unions were a part of Apprenticeship Day, touting the knowledge and experience that comes with a union apprenticeship and the benefits organized labor provides working people. My name is Elvin Jones. I'm part of a local 234 of Jacksonville, pipe fitters and um, eight, uh, AC. It makes you more self-efficient. It, it, you contribute more to society as far as it, uh, um, building something, you know, um, you feel good about yourself and as well as you learning, you getting that, um, that training, you as well can teach it to others too that's behind you with me being the fifth year and about to turn out. My name is Robert Weishart. I'm the director of apprenticeship for the iron workers in South Florida, Southeast Florida. The path toward a great career. Uh, you start at a, at a good wage, 50% of journeyman's wage, and in addition, you get uh, health benefits. Uh, it's about $6 an hour. The contractor pays, covers you and your family. Uh, it's a great place to start. Uh, as you progress through the apprenticeship, you get incremental raises every six months, and you start moving towards the journeyman's pay. So my name is Danny Van Sickle, and I'm the train director for the Electrical Training Alliance of Jacksonville, Florida. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Uh, we are sponsored by the IBEW Local Union 177. I thoroughly enjoy what I get to do every single day because I get to see young men and women and tell them about that same opportunity that was given to me. And the opportunity is to get a good education, to get a tuition-free education that you do not have to pay for, and it will enable you to make a good living whenever you get done with this. And the education is first class. The carnage in the capital continues, but the people of Florida are using their voice to fight back. Working Families Lobby Court is made up of thousands of citizens from every corner of the Sunshine State, standing up for the people and bringing the lessons they learned back to their communities. Join today. Hi, I'm Felicia Bruce from the Treasure Coast Florida Alliance for Retired Americans and I'm here with my colleagues and friends because we may have retired from paid work but we haven't retired from democracy and we hope never to. We're here to watch the legislature and make them hear our voice. You can do it too. You're never too old but it may be too late if you don't speak up and speak out.
My name is John Schultes. I'm a business agent with Teamsters Local 79 in Tampa, Florida. I'm up here in Tallahassee to learn about the legislative process and to get involved. Solidarity! Tune in next week as we continue to bring you each terrifying update from the Capitol.